as in the last crime story, which I'll link up here, it's a good place to start, isn't it? So, in 1937, that was one of the most infamous addresses in the whole of England. A crime happened there that would change English law, or help to change English law. But, to start the journey, we must go to Newark. And so, see me in Newark. So, you're going to have to forgive me for the bad audio and video. Forgot the SIM card. Um, but here we are in Newark. Now, here, those white doors, that used to be a school, a primary school. And on in January 1937, a Mona Tinsley, apart from being seen a couple of times in this area, would never be seen again. Now, Frederick Nodder, who used to lodge with the Tinsleys, was seen in this area on the road the morning she went missing. So, very quickly, the police had a lot to go off. A young boy had said she had seen Mona with a man at the bus depot and they'd spoken to Mona's parents Lillian and William and they were very reluctant to give any information um, they were saying it couldn't possibly be him now Frederick had been a lodger at Tinsley's home and the kids loved him um, so they were very adamant that it couldn't possibly be him. Uh, now, the reluctancy of the parents was a bit concerning, but the reluctance to give information by the sister, uh, Edith Grimes, if I remember correctly, that was even more concerning. But she reluctantly told it, they, they found, the police had found out that Edith had gone to visit Frederick a few times and that they were actually having an affair and and then the boy had spotted Mona with somebody and then a witness said named Frederick Nodder is being seen with Mona and another witness saw Frederick outside that middle address the Mona was just outside the front window I'll take a picture and point it out I've got somebody walking behind me so I'm trying to push on um, so now the police were convinced convinced that it was Frederick Nodder um, a witness to Edith Grimes said that Frederick was around Edith's house quite a lot and that they had even seen Frederick Nodder driving a lorry marked Retford. So we are on the outskirts of Retford here. The police tracked down the firm and the firm gave us the address of here. And that's when a witness said, oh, I saw Frederick with a, with a kid just outside that address. So it was looking pretty grim for Frederick within a day and in 1937 I imagine that's pretty good police work so the police waited outside the road where we started this video and when Frederick came home they arrested him and they searched the home and the home was a pigsty absolute shambles by all accounts and in the home they found a child's fingerprint on a mug in the filthy sink and also bits of paper with lots of children's handwriting on. So suspicions on Frederick Nodder were growing and growing. It's a nice little oh. The home is 
that one. Well, it's a very pleasant area. Um, so Frederick Nodder was feeling the heat of a lot of circumstantial evidence. It turns out Frederick was asked to leave the Tinsley's home because he never paid any rent and he was a raging alcoholic. Now, the only thing the police could keep Frederick on was non-payment of an affiliation order. And Frederick was in the cells and denied all involvement of the disappearance of Mona Tinsley, so I forget about those. Now, now, this area here, all around here in 1937, would have been a thrive of activity trying to find Mona it became the biggest case in England. They, everybody was convinced that they knew her had done it. Look at that sunshine. But they just couldn't prove without the body that it was Frederick Nodder. I'll uh, send you some pictures of this area in 1937 and all the activity of people searching in this canal. So with all this pressure growing on Frederick, he said that he had seen Mona and he picked her up from the school. So he drastically changed his statement and said, she, he had told Mona how would you how would you like to go and see your baby cousin in Sheffield? And his story was that he had put Mona on a bus from Retford to Sheffield in the dark of night in January in England. So pitch black. Um, and what his plan was for Mona at the other end, obviously raised suspicion. He's going to let a kid try and find an address at 11 o'clock at night in Sheffield. So he was arrested and sentenced to abduction of a child. So in March of 1937, Frederick Nodder was found guilty of Section 56, Crimes Against the Person Act, in taking a child away from its parent. So at this point, what do you think? All this circumstantial evidence. He lives next to a canal. What do you think? Do you think, think he's guilty? Well, he was found guilty, but he could only be charged with that section 57. More rubbish. Crimes Against the Person Act. And he got seven years. Everybody was fairly convinced that he had done this crime. The murder, not just the abduction. And this place continued to be massively dredged. All the empty houses were searched. It was national news and it said that very rarely a day went by when Mona was missing that it wasn't in the news. They even enlisted the help of celebrity medium Estelle Roberts and she said that she was a big deal at the time apparently and she would do her paranormal medium things <laughs> and she said that Mona had been strangled and was taken down here in the dead of night by a man. Um, she did name the man as Frederick Nodder and she would be found in water and she even pointed to a spot 
down the road, uh, well, down the river. Now, the Daily Express put up £250 reward, which I did like a little inflation guide. And that would have been, I think it was just shy of £20,000 at the time. This is how big this case had gone. But Frederick Nodder, with just circumstantial evidence, decided just to bide his time, seven years, he would be out. And the search for Mona continued. I really do, do go to some remote parts of this country to do these videos. I was going to the Golden Gate Bridge a couple of years ago. Now I'm going to the Fred Bloggs' Gate in Ritford. Um, so why? So why is the why was the the rule of nobody no murder? That was because. In the 17th century, a William Harrison, I think it was, went for a walk and he never came back. And his servant, his brother and his mother were hung for the murder of this William. Two years later, William turned up saying he was abducted and sold into slavery in the Ottoman Empire. So since then, there was like a, oop, if there's no baddie, there's no murder, we're not risking this again. Um, so that's why this law was in. But this case, because of how high profile it was, um, got people talking about it and concerned about it. Because if you're like me, he seems very guilty of this crime. Everything points to him. There's been three people that's seen her with him and she's gone missing and sees a was it, it was an 11 year old girl um so it got raised in public profile and now nodder just thinking oh, i'll just chill out and bide my time in prison i've gotten away with murder it's only seven years well unfortunately for everybody in this stretch of water we are in right now Mona Tinsley was found by somebody rowing I believe an off-duty police officer with his three sons found the body and knowing it was a body um, the guy I, I don't think history reveals his name told his son to go and make a phone call and the police took the body into, can you see that white building? You won't be able to hear me now. See the white building? Yeah, the, the police took her to that building. It was the ship in, it still is, in Newington. And the Tinsley family uh, identified Mona Tinsley later that night and now Frederick Nodder was then resentenced and this time he could be sentenced to the murder for Mona Tinsley and he was found guilty and he was hung on the 30th of December 1937 in Lincoln in Lincoln jail and I wish I knew I was going to do this video in the future because many years ago I did a tour of Lincoln Prison because they were doing family and friend tours and I saw where the gallows were in Lincoln so I could have uh, rounded this video off better um, but because of this case and how high profile it was I'll show you the canal in a that wind's a bit of a killer because of how high profile it was they revisited this law of nobody, no murder, and it was changed in the 1950s, I believe. But well, it's 
is just goes to show a how crazy criminal history was. Imagine all the murders in our lifetime that wouldn't have been solved if that law was still in place. And it's often cited that this was the case. They changed it. It changed a good 20 years after, but because of how high profile it was, it certainly changed the no body, no murder case, the no body, no murder law in England. Mona Tinsley was strangled, she was choked with a cord, and she was carried into the water as the medium stead. This, this spot is about 10 miles upstream, or downstream, I don't really know which way the streams go, but along the same stretch of water, um, Nodder never did say what he did. Um, but he was hung in Lincoln Prison, one of the last hangings in Lincoln Prison, I think there's only about five more after that. Um, so that brings a conclusion to the video. I am in hashtag the middle of nowhere, as you know I am, but I'm in a different county. Um, so thank you very much for watching, please subscribe. Um, I don't know what's next, it's Christmas, so this is technically a Christmas video. You're noticing as much as I am that my hat is falling down and I can't see it anymore. Um, so I hope you all have a great Christmas. Thank you for watching my videos the last few months. Um, being in lockdown has really helped me uh, just get out and about. And I know I don't have a lot of viewers, but I do appreciate it if you are watching. Have a great Christmas and I will see you before the new year.